I am honoured to have the opportunity to say a few words at this public hearing of the European Economic and Social Committee. The vital role you play in serving as a bridge between various bodies of the European Union and civil society organisations is critical to the successful implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Peace and prosperity cannot take root where governments are unresponsive to the needs of their citizens. When history is written, it will be clear that 2015 was the year of multilateralism. This was the year when governments committed to a sustainable path for the planet and for its people. In all these endeavours, the leaders of the Member States of the United Nations were supported by a massive engagement of multiple groups of stakeholders. Civil society, the private sector, young people, women and other major groups came in and contributed to the new agenda. And the result was a 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with 17 goals that cut across the three pillars of the United Nations Charter. Peace and security, human rights and justice and sustainable development brought together within this 2030 Agenda. There are principles for its implementation that we must never forget. First, it is a universal agenda that applies to every nation. It's not just about a certain group of people in some countries. It's about all people throughout the world in all countries. Indeed, within this agenda, we recognise that every country is a developing country. Second, it is an indivisible agenda. The goals within the agenda are all interlinked. They reflect the totality of human experience, and this indivisibility matters. It requires a new and horizontal way of thinking and of working. Thirdly, leave no one behind. No community should be considered to be outside the span of this new agenda. Whatever your ethnicity, whatever your livelihood, whatever your lifestyle or location, all of you are inside the agenda. Fourthly, integrated action. The only way to respond to this new agenda for sustainable development is through integrated action, moving right across the sectors of government, right across the disciplines of academic study. And this is perhaps the hardest development of all, because over the years in our professional work, in our governments, and in all our endeavours, we tended to operate in separate ministries, separate departments, separate disciplines, and even separate organisations. I'd like to talk a bit about the means of implementation. World leaders do recognise that implementation of this new agenda is the ultimate test of its success. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in some ways can be seen as a declaration of interdependence, because to implement it, we must each come together to leverage our comparative strengths, capacities and resources to ensure maximum impact. Enough money does exist in our world to finance a sustainable future, but it needs to be invested really smartly. And indeed, in order to check how we're getting on, we've got to increase accountability at all levels to unlock international domestic resources and to ensure that they're used effectively. The Addis Ababa Action Agenda agreed last year points to all sources of finance that can be used for development, domestic and international, public and private, as well as resources derived from trade and commerce as engines for development. And then we've got debt and debt sustainability. We've got systemic issues. We've got science, technology, innovation and capacity building all coming together to contribute. More effective and better targeted overseas development assistance funding 
of course can be hugely valuable to leverage these other resources and ensure they're effectively used. And that means an absolute need to continue to uphold and to renew commitments on overseas development assistance. Indeed, I would like to say here clearly that in my view, international public funds or concessional finance will continue to play a central and catalytic role in development, particularly in some of the most vulnerable and least developed countries. I'd like to see targeted focus on LDCs, LLDCs, SIDSs and countries in vulnerable situations. Funding that helps them to facilitate an integrated response to the sustainable development agenda themselves. I'd like us to see better coordination of finance to reduce fragmentation among various initiatives and funding efforts. And of course, I'm delighted that cooperation between developing countries has gained increasing attention as an effective way to achieve sustainable development and address climate change, what's sometimes referred to as South-South coordination. And honestly, the United Nations has been a significant advocate, supporter and facilitator of this cooperation between countries in the South. It's one of the Secretary General's key pillars on climate action. Now a word on the contribution of civil society. As experts of development, you know that the new 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development will succeed only if people everywhere know that it exists, understand its significance to their daily lives and act upon it with robust means for action. So our big focus now is to disseminate the message that the 17 goals exist and that they represent a new social contract between leaders and the, their people. We need to inform everyone that these goals are the heart of a plan for the future of the world's people as well as for the planet itself. And we'd like at least 2 billion people in our world to know about the goals and to know that they form the basis of a plan for the future of the world by the end of 2017. That's slightly more than one quarter of the world's population. It's a very ambitious dissemination project, but unless we embrace that level of ambition, the prospect of the agenda being understood and acted on by the majority of the world's population is limited. So let's start with reaching one quarter over the next two years. In addition, I'd like to go further. I'd like us to be sure that there can be a group of committed activists who are engaged and who can then help explain to others the goals and why they matter to people's lives. I'd like us to activate 1,000s of these champions, what I call the activated activists, each day between 2016 and 2017. That's more than 700,000 people activated by the end of 2017. And if that's done, there can then be a cascading out of information about the Sustainable Development Goals. We believe that's the only way to get information to people, to enable them to become aware, and then to encourage them to act on this information wherever they are. We also need a core group of organisations and networks that can act as the hub to take forward the Sustainable Development Goals and to share the new ways of thinking, working and reporting that they represent everywhere. What it means? It means thinking and working horizontally and holistically in government and in civil society. So we'd like to work with these networks to reach 2 billion people with the knowledge about the goals and to engage 700,000 activists to promote the goals. I hope we can work together to reach out far and wide in this way, to amplify the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, to ensure that it is heard by everyone. 
and I hope that we can work together to strengthen the voices of leaders in their own communities to be at the center of this transformation. I hope we can work together to create avenues for citizens to engage and to shape their collective destiny. Thank you for the chance to speak with you today, and I do wish you fruitful deliberations.